you know, there's a bit of anatomical truth to calling someone empty-headed. Our heads need some degree of emptiness to function properly. The brain needs a thin, empty space that acts as a suspension system to protect it from a sudden impact. Not only that, but we also have some more empty spaces located in the center part of our skulls. Starting from our time inside the uterus, the nasal cavity eroded the surrounding bones in our skulls and formed the paranasal sinuses, the air-filled spaces that lie within the facial bones. All the sinuses, therefore, drain back into the nasal cavity. The function of the paranasal sinuses are as follows. Humidifying inspired air, increasing resonance of the voice, assisting the immune system in the nasal cavity, serves as a crumple zone to protect vital structures in case of facial trauma. The sinuses are named after the bones that they are located in. There are four sinuses in our skulls, maxillary, frontal, sphenoid, and ethmoidal. Now, let us enter those hollow spaces one by one. Maxillary sinuses. The maxillary sinuses are the largest of the sinuses. Pyramidal in shape, paired, and symmetric. They are located under the eyes, laterally and slightly inferiorly to the nasal cavities. The nearby structures of this sinus are the lateral nasal wall, the floor of the orbital bone, and the posterior maxillary wall where the pterygopalatine fossa exists. The floor of the maxillary sinuses is close to the roots of the molar teeth. The maxillary sinuses empty into the nasal cavity via the hiatus semilunaris, a crescent-shaped groove in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity inside the middle meatus. Meatuses are the space behind the turbinates, the bony projections inside the nose. The hiatus semilunaris is a part of a unit called osteomeatal complex. It consists of the hiatus semilunaris, the uncinate process, a bony hook projection from the ethmoid bone, and the ethmoid infundibulum, a curved channel that drains the frontal sinus. Since the maxillary sinus's opening is located underneath the frontal sinus opening, the mucus draining from the frontal sinuses can enter the maxillary sinus and leads to the spread of infection. Frontal sinuses the two frontal sinuses are separated from each other by a bony septum. They are the most superior of the paranasal sinuses and are roughly triangular in shape and rarely symmetrical, extending upward above the medial end of the eyebrow and backward into the middle part of the orbital roof. It drains by the frontonasal recess, which leads into the ethmoid infundibulum, which then leads into the hiatus semilunaris in the middle meatus. Sphenoid sinuses the sphenoid sinuses are situated posteriorly and in the center within the body of the sphenoid bone below the cella tersica. They drain into the nasal cavity through the sphenoethmoidal recess that leads to the superior meatus behind the superior turbinate. Ethmoidal sinuses. The ethmoid sinuses consist of many paired cells with complex structures. They are usually divided into the anterior ethmoid sinuses, which drain into the ethmoid infundibulum and the posterior ethmoid sinuses, which drain to the sphenoethmoidal recess in the superior meatus. The ethmoid sinuses and the orbit area are separated only by a thin bone, so infection can spread here. Similar to how computers need an internet connection and a power source to work properly, the sinuses need nerves to supply sensation, the arteries to provide nutrients, and the vein to remove unneeded substances and wastes. Here are the details for each part. The nerve supply to the paranasal sinuses starts from the trigeminal nerve. It branches into the ophthalmic nerve above, which produces the frontal nerve, and finally into the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerve that innervates the frontal sinuses. The ophthalmic nerve also branches into the nasociliary nerve, which gives the posterior and anterior ethmoidal nerve to the ethmoid sinuses. Next, the second branch of the trigeminal nerve, called the maxillary nerve, branches into the sphenopalatine nerve that innervates the sphenoid sinus, and the infraorbital nerve, which supplies the maxillary sinuses. The arterial blood supply starts from the common carotid artery in the neck area, which branches into the external carotid artery. It gives rise to the maxillary artery, which branches supply the maxillary sinus. 
it also branches into the sphenopalatine artery that supplies the sphenoid sinus. The second branch of the common carotid artery is called the internal carotid artery. It gives rise to the ophthalmic artery. It branches further into the anterior ethmoidal arteries that supply frontal sinuses and anterior ethmoidal sinuses, and the posterior ethmoidal artery that supplies the posterior ethmoid sinuses. Now to the venous drainage. The facial vein on the anterior side and the pterygoid venous plexus on the posterior side drain the maxillary sinus. The pterygoid venous plexus drains into the maxillary vein, which also drains the sphenoid sinus. From the frontal sinus, the supraorbital vein drains the blood into the superior ophthalmic vein, which also receives from the ethmoidal vein of the ethmoid sinuses. All of the venous drainages will lead into the jugular vein in the neck area. So from this video, besides now owning an intense knowledge of paranasal sinuses anatomy, hopefully you're no longer confident to call others empty heads as you are also one. Sinus wise.